Um, well, thanks everybody for joining today. Appreciate it. Um, we all know that COVID numbers are rising. Um, earlier in the week, healthcare professionals and executives um, shared with me and the public um, the, dire, the dire picture that we're in with predictions of um, hospitalizations doubling by December, potentially tripling by Christmas, unless additional actions were taken. So today with this new order, we are partnering with businesses to do everything possible to keep businesses open and protect public health at the same time. Um, and we've heard from the business community that they needed support and help in enforcing their own masking rules in accordance with local health orders. And so if businesses need help, um, there's a number that businesses can call and we will provide the support that they need to remove non-compliant customers from their premises and hold them accountable. And then to protect the businesses that are doing the right thing and following central district health orders and protocols, we will hold those accountable. But we will hold businesses who are not following pro protocols, who are not protecting public health accountable for that so that those businesses that are protecting public health can remain open. It is our intent to keep business open. It's our goal to keep business open and protect public health. So we're taking this step um, with new hooks of business licensing to ensure that we can protect public health and protect businesses that are operating responsibly um, in this tough time. And we'll do that effective Monday so that there's time for businesses um, that know that they need to do some things to follow the rules already in place and have time to prepare for that. And then beginning Monday, there will wait, be a way for businesses um, and others concerned about practices to be able to call the city. And with that, um, I'm happy to take any questions. And the first question was from Katya. It was city facilities like city hall and libraries with long-term closures. What's going to happen to the staff and employees who work for those facilities? Thanks, Katya. And then I'll, I'll do this for anybody as well, because um, I should have mentioned city facilities. We did announce the beginning Monday City Hall, City Hall West will be closed. Um, other city facilities such as the James Castle House are closed. Um, and then some long-term closures at this point for both public health and fiscal reasons. It made sense just to plan now given the state of where we're at. And we're, we're repurposing staff wherever we can. Um, if there are staff in specific facilities um, that can help provide services and others, and we're working to do that. And our current staff have worked with their supervisors about those specific issues. Thank you, Mary. And I'm going through these in order. This one might seem out of order because it's privately sent from uh, Thomas. Uh, what will the restrictions look like at the airport? How much is the citation? And what are police expecting this rollout to look like? And I know I sent Thomas some answers to some of these questions earlier. Yeah, I'm going to refer everybody to the documents that um, our staff have sent to businesses and others for those specifics. All right, the next question. The next question is from Haley. She said, you said in April and a few other times that you wanted to focus on education because you didn't want to clog the courts or the jails. What changed? Well, we're using business licenses. So um, businesses that are behaving badly that we have to hold accountable and will be, will go through a process with our clerk and code enforcement related to their ability to operate a business um, within the city. So this is, and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll say, this is a unique approach. Um, and I understand now why elected officials around the country to protect public health are just closing sectors of businesses at the time, given the numbers that we're seeing around the country, because there aren't a lot of tools to do this. We chose to come up with an innovative approach. It's almost like a scalpel going after um, the licensed businesses in our community that aren't following the rules that have been established and set out to protect public health rather than using an ax and closing it all down. That said, there's nothing that we won't do to protect public health. We need this to work. And if it doesn't work, we'll have to reevaluate. Thank you, Mayor. The next question is from Travis. Are people required to now wear masks anytime outside in public places like parks, even when they are social distancing? Um, we've, we've said all along you need to wear a mask and the order again requires masks as we always have 
um, if you cannot maintain six feet of distance. And I'll say in City Hall, in public hearings, and all of those places now, we are requiring masks at all time, even when there's space between people. Thank you, Mayor. This next one is from Dawn Day. There are a few examples of businesses around town that have caught a lot of attention on social media for not enforcing mask use. If folks start to complain about them, can you explain what would happen next? So um, the Central District Health has been collecting those complaints and we receive them too. When the public calls the city, um, our code enforcement officers will go and investigate the complaint. Um, and we of course hope that, that, that we actually find that the business is, is complying. If not, um, we'll look at a process through which the license, the permission to operate would be pulled um, for a minimum of 10 days for the first offense, for a minimum of 20 days for the second offense. Thank you, Mayor. The next one is from Nicole. What is the main difference between the CDH advisory, the Governor Stage 2 requirements, and the Boise requirements? Um, our order uses our, how should I say this? Our order um, provides us with a mechanism to enforce the protocols that have been set forth by Central District Health for business operation. Uh, this next one is from Travis, and he wants to know, I'm going to kind of paraphrase, what are you going to be doing for transparency when these public facilities are closed, uh, including can you interviews? Also tell me, can you also tell me, as you're giving me names, just where people are from? Since I can't see people's faces, I'd love to just know that, too. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, I'm not complete. I can't remember where Travis is from. That's my bad. I believe he's a, um, a TV reporter, though. Okay. Um, well, just as before, when we had to close city facilities during the stay home order, um, and then in the original stage two, our city facilities were closed. We have um, online ability, we have ways for people to conduct business digitally, and we've encouraged them to still do that. Um, our city council meetings will, and will remain in hybrid form, um, so people will be able to come in and testify in person. We encourage people to do it through Zoom, um, as we've encouraged all along. Um, we will continue to have monthly listening sessions, which are done just like this. Um, and I'll continue to meet with the press in our huddles to discuss, to answer questions, discuss what's happening. And at the end of the day, it is imperative on us not only to protect public health and all of our residents um, by ensuring that businesses are operating appropriately, uh, following the rules that have been set, set out because of the public health emergency, but also to make sure that we as a city can continue to provide services. So we've got people that have to operate the water treatment plant. We need to make sure that they stay healthy. We've got to make sure that the folks that have to clear the runways when it snows stays healthy. And so what we're trying to do, given the amount of community spread, is return to the way we did business in the original stage two to protect our employees and to be sure that we can continue to provide the services that are essential. And this will have to be the last one because I got to get the mayor to another event here. But um, I'll go, Katya asked a couple questions. I'm going to ask, do you nice hope- Nice to see your face, Katya. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you hope the state follows your lead on this public health order? We're doing what we can, we are impacting what we can impact, which is the city of Boise. Um, but healthcare professionals have made it clear that one city alone can't do everything needed to slow the spread of the virus um, and ensure that there's room in the hospitals. So I hope that around the valley, around the state, we'll continue to see um, leaders step up and take action to protect the health of those in our communities and those we love. Well, thanks a lot, everyone. Uh... I know this was short notice. I, I had a lot of folks asking for an interview with the mayor today, so I just tried to figure out a way to get everyone what they wanted. Uh, and I got a, a little bit of time to sneak away and volunteer with the United Way, and I came and I came back to messages from South saying everybody needs to talk, and so <laughs> we decided just to do it this way. Um, sorry, I wasn't available sooner. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mayor. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye bye.